Falcon 9's in startup. All right, there we heard it. The onboard flight computers have taken over the launch countdown as Falcon 9 is now in startup. Falcon 9, Starlink LDs, go for launch. Okay, there we heard our launch director give the final go for launch. As we approach the T minus 30 second mark, all systems are all systems are go for launch. Let's listen in to terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our stack of Starlink satellites into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully Power telemetry nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. We're going to throttle the nine Merlin engines down in preparation for max Q or, ma supersonic. or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see during ascent, so slowing it down a little bit will help the vehicle pass through that short period. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for Max Q. Now, in about a minute, we're going to have three events happen in quick succession back to back. The first one is main engine cutoff, or MECO. This is where all nine of those M1D engines are going to shut off, and that'll help slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name would suggest, this is when the first and second stages will separate from, the se from each other. The first stage will start its way back to Earth. Max, chilling in. We heard the chill in. We're flowing some super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps on that second stage engine. Uh, the first stage after stage separation will make its way back to Earth. Second stage will continue its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit and main engine cutoff will be coming up in 10 seconds. Everything continues to look nominal there with that vehicle trajectory. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. All right, there on your screen. Ignition and throttle up complete. As the MVAC nozzle begins to develop that bright glow, we can see that all three events, like I said, quick succession. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, we have the first stage. Uh, in the background behind the first stage, I absolutely love this view. We got some night lights of the Space Coast behind it. Uh, the first stage is actually- Bearing separation confirmed. Uh, there we heard the call out for fairing step, and we can see that stack of Starlink satellites there. Great views. Everything looks nominal there with our second stage. As it heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, first stage is going to execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. If you look closely, you can still see the night lights of the Space Coast there in the upper left corner. The first of the two burns that first stage will execute is the entry burn where three of the M1D engines will reignite. This will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. 
The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed signal permita. that brings the speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. So there are both shots that we have on screen um, are actually both of the of the second stage. We can see the large plume on the left hand side. Everything continues to look nominal. So there we can see that second stage uh, vacuum engine. This engine will power the second stage to its targeted orbit. What you can't see on screen is the other end of the second stage where the 60 Starlink satellites are stacked and awaiting deployment later on in our mission this morning. Starlink satellites operate over 60 times closer to the Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in much lower latency. For those of you that might not be familiar, latency is the time that it takes to send data from one point to the next. So in this context, it's the time it takes to send data. Second stage is following a nominal trajectory. Good call out there for nominal trajectory for second stage. Um, so latency, in this context, it's the time that it takes to send data from the ground to the satellite and then back. When satellites are far away from Earth, latency is high. We're talking 550 milliseconds or more. This prevents activities like video calls and online gaming. When satellites are close to Earth, like the Starlink satellites, latency is low, more like 20 to 40 milliseconds versus 550 milliseconds. This enables video calls and online gaming with an experience similar to fiber or cable. And because Starlink is a satellite network, you're not limited by ground infrastructure. That's one of the main reasons why people who live in rural or remote areas don't have access to high-speed internet, because running the fiber or the cable necessary to get them connected is just too expensive. The Starlink kit comes with everything you need to get connected, including your Starlink, also known as Dishy McFlatface, your Wi-Fi router, power supply, and cabling. The hardware comes pre-connected in the box, so all you have to do is download the Starlink app, plug it in, find the best install installation spot for your dishy and you can get connected Stage to one FTS is saved. You can get connected to the internet in a matter of minutes. Startup. Stage 1 entry burn startup. And there we can see on your screen startup of that first of two burns, the entry burn. This lasts 20 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, we have reignited 3 of the 9 Merlin engines at the base of the first stage vehicle. Stage one entry burn shut down. And shut down of those three engines. So the reason we perform the entry burn is we want to slow the first stage down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. As you can tell by the energy there on the grid fins, we can see that it's going pretty fast and we want to slow the velocity down as it re-enters the atmosphere. Second stage is on a nominal trajectory. Heard the call out there that second stage is on a nominal trajectory. The next event that we have coming up will be the landing burn for the first stage, as the name suggests. Uh, this is when we'll be attempting to land on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently holding position uh, a, a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic. A couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Everything continuing to look good with the second stage and our Starlink satellites. Also signal stage one, Cape Canaveral expected. Stage one landing burn. So we heard the call out that the landing burn for stage one has begun. We can start to see the plume there on our drone ship cam on the left hand side of your screen. Hopefully we'll be able to maintain video signal through landing. Stage one landing leg deploy. Okay, the landing legs are out. Terminal guidance. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we weren't able to maintain that video signal. We'll, we'll bring that back to you as soon as we can, as well as a status update on that landing. Everything continues to look stage good. Stage two FTS is saved. Everything continues to look good there with second stage. Stage one landing confirmed. All right, we heard it, we couldn't see it, but we did hear verbal confirmation that we had a successful landing of that booster. 
marking our 70 also signal stage two from the Cape as the, expected. This marks our 77th successful recovery of an orbital class yeah, rocket and the ninth landing of this particular booster. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is the first time that we've launched and landed a Falcon 9 first stage nine times. Nominal orbit insertion. And just like that, we heard confirmation of a good orbit. So at this point, stage two is going to coast for a little bit, actually for the next 35 minutes or so. So hang tight. We'll see you back here at T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight.